Cool. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the That's Allowed podcast. I'm your hostess, Adrienne McKeon, and today we have Sarah Wong. Sarah, please introduce yourself. Hi, Adrienne. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Sarah, and I am the owner of Metamorphosis 101, a life and career coaching business. And I'm just so excited to be here to chat with you and sort of explore where this conversation will go. Absolutely. So yeah. the first question that I usually ask, I'll just throw mm -hmm. this out here and see what this gives. Sure. What story is the world not getting? Ooh, uh, well, something that I have spoken on a few other podcasts about and just something that I'm really passionate about within my own life and my experience is uh, my adoption and being adopted um, and just adoption in general. It's sort of something that I found um, is, it's like a weird, almost taboo topic that you don't hear a whole lot about, but it's such an amazing gift that I received in my life. And um, I don't know, just that part of my story, I think is something that I really enjoy talking about um, and that, you know, I don't think that that many are out there sort of advocating for it and sort of speaking about their experiences within that. Um, you know, I've had both good and bad come in my life because of it. But uh, just in general, I would say that that, that story, um, and especially more positive stories of adoption, I feel like the stories that I have heard out there are often, you know, kind of the horror stories. Uh, <laughs> so I like to, you know, share my positive story of adoption. That's something that I think um, that, you know, it's great. I love, I love, love talking about it and I love sharing it. And as well, you know, of course, just the mental health stigma and that sort of thing as well. That's another kind of aspect of my work and of my life that I think is uh, being more spoken about now than before, which is fantastic. But I think that's something that still needs some more light shed on it. Absolutely. So we'll dive into your story in just one second. I just want to say yeah. adoption is something that's very close to my heart as mm -hmm. well, because I have an adopted sister. Now she, wow. <laughs> she was adopted into our family uh, when she was a little bit older because okay. she is adopted originally mm -hmm. the family mm -hmm. and the family that she had been adopted into, there was a lot going on, shall we say, when she was growing up. Mm -hmm. um, her mm -hmm. mother had cancer over and over and over again. Oh my they gosh. kept, you know, sending her home to die. And it sort of became the running oh. joke of like, mom's coming home to die again. And oh, so no. <laughs> and I became besties and she spent a lot of her time just living at our house. And so eventually we just made it official and adopted her. And so she is now That's my sister. Amazing. Yeah. So wow. kind of a negative and positive experience there. Um, and she Absolutely. has reconciled with her original adoptive family now and, uh, you know, considers them family as well. So we all have a, a big extended family at this point. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love to know where, where does this story begin for you? So my adoption story is I was adopted from birth. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that, that was my scenario. And I have an adopted sister as well. She's not my biological sister. Uh, so we grew up together. We had a, just a beautiful childhood and I always knew I was adopted. My parents were very open with me about it, which I sincerely appreciate. But um, throughout my life, I didn't really know a whole lot about my biological background and where I truly came from. I knew kind of minimal information. Obviously I'm interracial. So I knew by my blood, I must be half Korean. I, I knew I was Korean on the Asian side and on the white side, I thought I was mostly Irish. Um, come to find out that I'm actually mostly British and Scottish. So pretty close to Irish, but Celtic? yeah. There's some Celtic um, there. <laughs> I'm Celtic, exactly. Cel some strong Celtic blood. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, as I grew older and as I kind of moved into my like mid twenties, uh, more and more questions started to come up about my biology and sort of, you know, that side of myself. So, um, you know, that's where I think the, the, the more difficult part of my adoption started to come in was in finding myself, right. And kind of finding my identity and who I am, right? Like I didn't realize, I guess, uh, how important that was for me 
because I have a lot of friends that are also adopted and they didn't have the same sort of issues that I had. Um, they didn't have the same sort of identity crisis that I was going through. And I just felt sort of um, on my on an island by myself in this sense, in this feeling that I needed to explore that side of myself more. And even, you know, my mom, my sister, my dad, like kind of reinforced to me, like, that doesn't really matter where your family, you know, we love you, we're here for you. Uh, but still that pull from inside was kind of, you know, it was creating this, this kind of void <laughs> inside of me. And so finally, uh, I decided, you know, this is something that I really need to pursue, even by the help of my therapist. Um, you know, I started seeing a therapist a couple years ago, and she, you know, strongly recommended, she was like, if this is something that you need to do, she's like, you know, it's so sweet that you're trying to respect your family and your mom and your dad and your sister. But uh, you know, for your personal growth and development, if it's something that you need to pursue or want to pursue, she's like, I think you should do that. So I decided to pursue that a couple of years ago. And um, I finally got in touch with my biological family about a little over a year ago, November of 2019. And ever since then, it's just been like this whirlwind, you know, it's like this opening of this door of this whole other part of myself that it's like, you know, it's like unlocking that key a little bit where I'm like, wow, okay, this has been inside of me for my whole life. And here I am now, like finally being able to explore. It's really almost like there was this door, right? That I couldn't access. And I was like standing by it, like curiously looking at it all throughout my life, you know, like, hmm, I wonder what's behind that door. And finally, <laughs> I pushed that door open and I started exploring and it's just been such an incredible, incredible uh, experience, you know, to, to learn more about my biology and to reconnect with my biological family. And now I have uh, a connection with so many of them. Like I think uh, that I consider myself kind of an empath and like I have, you know, like a spiritual connection with a lot of them because, they knew about me and they had been thinking about me all throughout my life. And I of felt course. them, I felt them, you know, like thinking about me. And that's where that curiosity was really coming from was like, you know, almost that spiritual connection, right. That I had with them in that set, like, it was crazy. Cause I remember there would be times where I would feel like, I would feel it so strongly. Like one of them is thinking about me. Somebody is thinking about me me, you know, like just this sense. And I thought I was crazy. You know, I thought I was completely crazy for feeling that way. And it was nice to, you know, have it validated and to learn that, you know, they told me, they were like, we have been thinking about you all throughout these years. So you feeling that was, was, you know, that was something real. That was something authentic. So that's been just an, it's been an incredible, I mean, I don't know if we want to kind of dive and dig a little deeper yeah, let's into go, that. Let's, yeah. let's go back a little bit. I want to, sure, sure. so, so you started, you know, sort of scratching at this door. You started to do that mm -hmm. research. What did you actually do and how did you find them? So it, I've, I've told this story a couple times and I love telling this story. Um, my biological mother, she wrote me a letter. Um, and I think that was when, uh, cause the door itself was kind of like, one that I didn't really have any desire to go behind up until I received this letter from uh -huh. my biological mother, you know, yeah, that it was like the everything. forbidden door. Yeah. It was like the forbidden door that I was just like, I don't have any interest in going there. And then a letter that I received from her, uh, cause I had up until I received that letter sort of just thought that maybe she didn't want to meet me or that, you know, right. that, that, that was sort of just how it would be. And you when have I opened, to feel invited, you know? Yeah, yeah. When I, when I opened the letter, she wrote in there that she would love to meet me someday. So it shifted me from, she doesn't ever want to meet me to, oh my God, here she is writing to me that she wants to meet me someday. And my parents had sealed that letter. They never read it. So they didn't really know what was in there. And they waited until they thought I would be ready, uh, like emotionally and, you know, to, to read it. So again, I was 22. It was the same week that I graduated from college. Wow. So I think that they were trying to get me through my college education and, sure. you know, then say, okay, it's time to explore this side of yourself now. So um, yeah, after that, I was very curious and I spent a few years uh, really actually going through the hardest mental 
part of my life. Um, it was, like I said, it, it went from this forbidden zone of like, I don't even really think I want to meet her to like, mm -hmm. okay, I want to pursue, but I don't really know how. Um, my parents didn't go through an adoption agency. They used an adoption lawyer. So it was a little bit more difficult. You know, there wasn't like a, you know, like a specific resource that I could turn to. Mm -hmm. um, and they gave me the number for the lawyer, but for some reason, like, I never called it and I never pursued it. And I looked on Facebook for a couple of my, um, cause I got my uncle's name, my biological uncle, my biological aunt, I got a few of their names, but they all, their last name is Kelly. And so they all have very common names. You know, when I searched for like Todd Kelly, Lori Kelly, there's like sure. a million <laughs> results on Facebook yeah. for them. So um, finding them was, was quite difficult, uh, but I, I submitted my ancestry DNA back in 2015. So that was like kind of the first step to learning more about my biology. And it was really interesting to get back the results for that. Because again, like I said, I thought I was Irish for most of my life and it turned out I was British. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And from there, eventually, you know, life took me in this crazy path. And I sort of like went down this rabbit hole for a few years of like, exploring my creativity and my artistic side and you know I, I had that phase of life where like I wasn't really focused a whole lot on like my job I focused on like finding myself and you know like just being a free soul for a little bit in life and it was really a night a fun time where I was able to explore but through that this identity crisis that I was going through just kind of got worse and worse uh to the point that I had you know, a pretty bad sort of breakdown where um, I think you, I saw in your questions uh, hitting that rock bottom. That rock and bottom, I would say yeah. that I, I, yeah, I hit that rock bottom and I, you know, realized that it was time to make a change. It was time to, to pursue this because it was really important for me, you know, and being able to move forward. So when and how did that tide turn? and allow you to start sort of climbing toward the light? And what did that look like for you? Yeah, so at the time I was working uh, at a nonprofit organization and I was actually really struggling in my position there. I was having performance issues. Uh, I was missing meetings. You know, I was having time management problems and it was all again, due to this identity crisis that I was going through yeah. and my colleagues were sort of noticing and they were Tom he's kind of one of my saviors I appreciate him so much because he is really into genealogy himself and he does all sorts of you know ancestry work for his own life and so I asked him I was like can you maybe help me in trying to find them and he actually found my biological grandparents phone number wow. uh I, yeah, <laughs> again, this was about November of 2019. And I was like, okay, um, he gave it to me. And like immediately I had an office at the time and I shut the door and I sat there, my heart was like racing. And I looked at the phone number and I was like, if I don't call it right now, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. So I picked up that phone. And of course, as it's ringing, I was like, wait, what if they don't know about me? What if I'm, you know, I was like, all right, I, you know, here we go. And so I heard an answer, a gentleman's voice, hello? And it turned out my biological grandfather and he knew about me. He knew who I was and he was so pleasant, pleasantly surprised to hear from me. Um, and he was like, I need to, I need to give the phone to Judy, his wife, my biological grandmother and chatted with her immediately learned that she was also adopted from birth, which was like, oh, wow. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. And that was just an instant connection that me and her had was, yeah. and as well, but come to find out that she also, like me, had an incredible curiosity to learn more about where she truly came from. So like I said, it was, that was really hard for me throughout my life was in talking to an, a lot of adoptees. Um, a lot of them didn't have that same curiosity that I had. Mm -hmm. And here I was now talking to my biological grandmother for the first time. And she's like, immediately, like, I fully understand what you're going through. And, and so she had spent years uh, working on our genealogy, working on our family's genealogy. So I went from knowing really nothing at all, going through this 
incredible identity crisis, feeling like torn in my soul <laughs> to having her send me and mail me all of our genealogy, <laughs> knowing all about my ancestors and sort of having all those answers, uh, excuse me, questions answered. And it was just such an incredible like shift, you know, it was like, yeah. a little, it, I have to say it was a little overwhelming. Like, um, and I received all of this, like in the beginning of the quarantine when the pandemic was just starting. So here I was like, I, I felt almost a little guilty because the whole world was like, going into this disaster mode and here yeah. I am like, oh my gosh, you know, like growing and learning and feeling just so like immersed into this new world. And it was, I mean, I just have to say, I appreciated the timing in my life because it gave me such a great distraction from, you know, the early days of the pandemic. And it was yeah. just so incredible to spend that, you know, uh, um, it was a good month or so that I spent looking into the ancestors because she, she gave me the list of all of them. And so I spent time kind of looking into who they were and doing my research. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. You know, so it was really fantastic and amazing to have those questions answered. And I think uh, I can maybe blame my ancestors for why I felt that so much because they were like, we need you to know who we are, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I felt called to action and called to service really in my life. And like I said, I was struggling in my job before I was really going through a rough patch in my life in general. And now I, here I am a year later, uh, I have a fantastic job that I love. I'm working full time again. Um, and I have my business that I'm operating on the side. So it's like, you know, it's just been an incredible growth experience. So how did your adoptive family respond uh, to all of this? Um, not the best, unfortunately, okay. that's been the hardest, hardest thing through all of it yeah. is, like I said, they have told me numerous times throughout my life that, that my biological family is not my family, that they're my family and they're very black and white about it. Yeah. And all I've been trying to do for my entire life is just trying to pull them more into the gray area, right? just trying to get them a little bit closer to understanding that my need to do this has absolutely nothing to do with my love for them or the mm -hmm. care that I have for our family. And if anything, me pursuing this makes me a, mo a more whole person and much more capable of being a better daughter, much more capable of being a better sister, a better colleague, a better friend, a better person in general. Like. I think, um, you know, not knowing answers that you, you really need to, that, that you're feeling deep inside that you need to know, and then not being able to access or even pursue those. And then having the people that you, you love the most sort of negatively reinforcing that you shouldn't do those things. It, you know, that's where I, again, thank my therapist so much for really pushing me and encouraging me to pursue it either way, because uh, I didn't, I didn't pursue it for as long as I did because of my adoptive family and because of their yeah. feelings around it. Um, and in time, you know, my, my sister, she's, she's pretty, because of her experience, she really has no connection with her biological family and she doesn't have any desire to connect with them. And I think that she sometimes forgets that we are separate people that our experiences are separate um, and that her feelings about that, you know, um, sh you know, it, it's different than my experience yeah. and my desire to pursue that doesn't have to necessarily be the same as hers. So, um, you know, that, that, that's probably been the biggest challenges with them, but my mom, I would say my adoptive mo mom, um, she's just my mom. Sometimes the language is a little bit challenging, but my mom, sure. she, <laughs> she, is probably the most supportive. She has been very open with uh, me sort of telling her about some of my ancestral history and sort of sharing in that. And um, her and my dad are still not comfortable with me talking about my relationship with my biological family, but they are more open to learning more about my biology and like my ancestors and my history and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but they've all, my whole family has basically said that they don't really want to know much about my relationship with my biological family and sort of the ins and outs and what that looks like. So 
that's something that was been, that was really hard for me, but I'm at a very good place with it right now where I've fully accepted their desires and I respect and honor their wishes with that. And I'm, I'm happy to, to keep it separate. And, you know, I have a fantastic relationship with, with both now, and it's, it's really amazing. Um, and I think it's taught me a lot of lessons in humility <laughs> and knowing like who I should and shouldn't share certain things with. I, yeah. I have like a, 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 a like a, an honesty streak where I'm like too open and too honest about things with too many people, you know? <laughs> so it's really taught me how to know, like, and learn how to like respect boundaries. Right. Um, Cause where I want boundaries within my life, right. I have to remember that other people want boundaries within their lives as well. And that's basically what my parents and my sister are asking me for with that is these are our boundaries and they want me to respect that. And for a long time, it was very challenging, you know, because I thought that they were, you know, I thought that they were kind of undercutting me or, you know, whatever, like that they were disrespecting my desires to pursue that. And then all I wanted was to be open and share it with them. But I understand now that I don't have to share it with them if they don't want to, and that it's okay for me to keep it separate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's life is a democracy. We all, you know, get to make our own decisions and nobody else gets a vote, but it's very true too, that other people have their boundaries and you got to respect that too. So it's really lovely that yeah. you've found that balance. Yeah. 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 It, it's been hard. It's been hard. I have to admit to achieve and to get there. But I have to say that like my self-care routine and my meditation, my mindfulness practice, I do daily yoga. I journal every single day, you know, like I have so much, uh, that helps me in, in order to be able to do that. And I yeah. just have to say that my mindfulness routine, um, the way that I manage my anxiety has been just so incredibly helpful. My cat, I'm sorry, my cat is. That's, I was, I was wondering if it was my cat. It. It's my cat. I think. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It happens. We have cats. We have lives. It's all right. <laughs> That's, that's actually part, one of the things I yeah. love about this podcast is that, you know, I don't try to polish it up too much. I just let people be people and let them be real people, you know? So yeah, what happens, happens now uh, you've kind of touched on this already, but I just want to ask this question to see what this gives. Mm -hmm. How did this journey change you? Oh man. Um, I, I consider myself a transition coach. That's sort of the title that I have through my business. Uh, so change is really kind of an, it's just a essential part of my whole life. Like I feel like every step along the way is, is a new change, a different change. And I feel like, you know, I, I, I've gone from being a very scared, very anxious, very fearful, allowing fear to sort of lead the way, you know, fear, I think was in the driver's seat of my life for a really long time and pursuing this change, reaching out to my biological family. You know, I would say that that was probably the biggest fear that I had. It was like that monster that was looming for a really long time in my life and yeah. doing that and kind of kicking that fear out and saying, no, I'm not going to let you control anymore. And me sort of taking over the driver's seat, it really, really empowered me and changed me into somebody that leads with my life with gratitude, somebody that leads my life with trust, somebody that leads my life every day. You know, every day when I wake up, my morning routine is to thank the sun for coming every single morning. I thank you to the sun <laughs> for bringing light into the day and providing that every single day. That's something that we can rely on every single day is the sun to come up. And I don't know, I just feel so much gratitude for that. And even for the moon, you know, like I just feel just this incredible, incredible sense of gratitude for everything where before I found myself constantly in the opposite, right? Constantly feeling frustrated and angry because I didn't, I, I did struggle to fit in a lot before. I've always been like a little bit of a black sheep in my life. And, you know, it's always been a little bit hard for me to sort of find my place. Um, so just sort of embracing who I am and not, not feeling resentful for everything and not feeling like 
I think I identified myself as a black sheep. So when I do that, then that's sort of, you know, like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way, like that's sort of what I became in the situations that I put myself into because that's, that's how I sort of saw myself. So yeah. um, just changing into, into somebody who leads with love and gratitude and trust has been probably the biggest and most incredible shift forward. That's wonderful. So what would you mm-hmm. say, uh, well, who, who, who needs to hear this story, do you think? Somebody who is, whether or not they're adopted, somebody who is dealing with anxiety, maybe identity issues, maybe mm-hmm. struggling to find themselves, who is going through the same sort of feelings that I was going through of, you know, maybe feeling like that black sheep, feeling like the outsider, feeling like they don't fit in anywhere that they go. And knowing and reminding them every day that, you know, your, your feeling and your sense of fitting in or whatever, like, I think that we rely so much on that external validation from yeah. others, right? Uh, but shifting that to an internal validation, right? Where I'm constantly validating myself through my experiences, turning that around, um, those are the types of people that I would want to, you know, get to and to talk to and to remind, like, if nobody is validating you, validate yourself first and foremost, love yourself first and foremost, remind yourself every single day. It can be hard. That's where my gratitude journal, my daily gratitude journal has been like so helpful. You know, every single day I remind myself in my journal, you're great. You're amazing. You know, I actually do a a Friday affirmations every week on my social media where I go on there and I share just sort of a theme for the week. I pick something like just depending on what's sort of going on that week. Sometimes it's hope. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, career development, whatever it might be. Um, And I just love sharing affirmations because practicing with daily affirmations was something that really helped me when I was kind of first making this change in my life. So, you know, somebody who finds themselves in their sort of negative thought cycles, uh, you can intercept that, you know, by forcing yourself to think about the more positive affirmations and just reaffirming to yourself, I am strong, I am powerful, I am worthy, you know, those sorts of things. Yeah, that segues into my last question, which is what Mm -hmm. do you say is the main message or takeaway from your story? Yeah, it would be to, if, especially if you're dealing with the same sort of issues that I was dealing with, like self-defeating thoughts and really negative thought cycles about yourself, uh, to intercept those things every single day, to intercept those thoughts with, with more gratitude again and, and reminding yourself every day that you are worthy and that you are loved and that there are people out there that, that will connect with you. And as well, um, I did some training on understanding my core values and what my core values really are and shifting my focus in my career to navigating from that place to navigating from my core values rather than pursuing a job title or pursuing money, you know, or pursuing these external sort of things. I shifted into steering my ship from my core values of dedication, fairness, and love. So no matter what I do through the rest of my life, um, that the different jobs that I have throughout my life will be ways in which I can pursue those core values of dedication, fairness, and love. So that's, that's what I would offer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's all about those values. I think the more you can delve into what do I care about? I love the word care because care doesn't just mean like something that, you know, you care about it's you give care, care is an action too. And so you can figure out what you care about by looking at what you put your energy into, you know? Where is your care? And that is really what helps align you to your true values. Absolutely. Yeah. Having that guiding light rather than, again, steering for um, just, you know, I think you can get misdirected if you start pursuing the wrong types of things and you you lose sight of what your real values are. I think kind of taking those, that time to look back within and really think about what your values are. It's super yeah. important and Absolutely. caring is always so critical. My cat, I, yeah. she's just <laughs> she's 
scratching, scratching, scratching. Cats, cats gonna be cats. <laughs> <sighs> so they, they don't like being locked out. Yeah, I know. I totally get it. Mine do the same, except mine meow loudly. So there's oh, okay. that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take you through a little exercise here. Okay? okay. So when you're ready, I'd like you to close your eyes. Just take a couple deep breaths. All right. So we're going to do a little time travel exercise. Okay. I am going to wave my magic wand and everything that you deeply desire is going to come to pass in this moment right here and now okay so whoosh the magic wand has been waved you now have everything that you deeply deeply desire to have in your life all your core desired feelings everything has come true so now i want you to kind of look around your life. You can keep your clo eyes closed if that helps you, or you can keep them open, whatever uh, is best for you. But it's like you're waking up in this perfect ideal world. And I want you to just tell me what's the first thing you see. Oh, man. I see just like open, open field, you know, mm. freedom, uh, green, fresh air, you know, just uh, like a meadow of yeah. beautiful flowers and butterflies and birds, you know, <laughs> and just Absolutely. like, uh, yeah, where the what air, you, you can smell? just smell the flowers in the air. Yeah, mm -hmm. just I smell the fresh flowers, um, you know, just that springtime, you know, I'm a springtime baby. So yeah. I always love the springtime and just that, that's that renewed sense of growth. And yeah, that's where, so that's where I want I'm you going to, right now. I want you to look down. You see that you're barefoot and tell me what it feels like on your feet. Mm, gentle and soft. It's like that soft grass where, you know, it's, it's nothing, nothing harmful. there. just very soft, very, mm -hmm. you know, like you can trust that you can take steps without it. Absolutely. You know, freedom, right. But once again, freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So you are completely free in this space. You can spend your time yeah. however you want to spend it. But I mm -hmm. want you to do something that feels meaningful and purposeful to you. What do you decide to go do? Hmm. Oh, man. I would, I would have to say that I, as a meditation person, I would just find a big giant tree mm. that can protect me and keep me warm, but you know, uh, that I can lay under and that tree, I can just sit there quietly, meditate, kind of le maybe lean up against this tree, almost yes. like a, you know, tree of life in a way. Gorgeous. Yeah. And so I this is a, and, yeah, this is a fruit tree. Okay. What kind of fruit is dropping just into your hand as you put your hand out it just drops right in there for you maybe a pomegranate beautiful beautiful yeah. so i want you to take a moment <laughs> and open that pomegranate see mm -hmm. those gorgeous pomegranate seeds in there smell mm -hmm. that wonderful pomegranate juice mm -hmm. mm. just really ground yourself in that moment of feeling completely nourished and taken care of mm-hmm and you can just pop a couple of those seeds in your mouth. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. That nourishment. So good. A little sour, a little sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the good stuff. It's the good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to notice that something unexpectedly wonderful has entered this space. Just a complete mm -hmm. surprise to you. You would never have guessed this was about to happen, but here it is. Oh, I would say a friend, maybe yeah. my best friend, Ashley is suddenly there. She's Wonderful. been my lifelong best friend ever since we were six years old. And I would say that she, and maybe even a couple of our other friends, Alex and Jaslyn are with her. Jaslyn moved to Montana, so I don't see her very often anymore, but there they are. All three of us, you know, we used to spend many, many nights together as four. And uh, all of a sudden here we are back together by this beautiful tree. Yeah, And I hand them each a pomegranate to have as well <laughs> exactly so you're passing around the pomegranates there's laughter mm -hmm. there's joy there's love mm -hmm. in the circle you can absolutely feel that just feel that energy yeah. and then 
you notice that one of them has brought a picnic Mm -hmm. and they're unpacking it. And there's just everything that you would love to eat is just right here Mm -hmm. in front of you. You're just feeling so nourished and taken care of by your friends here. Can you tell me what have they brought for you? Oh man. Well, I'm a huge soup person. Mm. I cook a different soup pretty much every week. So they've made me my favorite soup, which is an Italian lentil endive soup. I just made it actually Mm. earlier this week, but it's so delicious. It's this creamy lentil uh, soup and they made it specially for me. (laughs) And here we are eating the soup. Maybe we have some sandwiches on the side, little bread to dip into the soup. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Maybe a little salad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. So as the day is kind of winding down, you've had this amazing time with your friends, you're celebrating life and you're celebrating all the wonderful things that you have in your life now. You're, Mm -hmm. you've got everything that you need. Everything's just taken care of. And so Mm -hmm. I want you to just find a space that looks incredibly comfortable and you just want to lie down Mm -hmm. and just get ready for sleep. And where, Mm -hmm. where are you? Oh, well, in this meadow, I think that this is a very safe place to sleep. So maybe I would go back to that same spot under the tree and, and maybe put down a little blanket for mm-hmm. myself and just enjoy a night sleeping underneath the stars. I, I'm a huge yeah. cosmonaut. I love, love stargazing. So I would just, you know, maybe stay up a little later than I should watching the stars and kind of just let that, yeah, let that, uh, that beauty of the night sort of take me away. We're watching different meteors and you know, (laughs) they even the Milky Way and this, in this area, you know, it's, you can see everything, the whole kind of galaxy out there. Absolutely. There's no light pollution. You can see no light pollution perfectly clearly. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a new moon. So it's just, the stars are just gorgeous tonight. Yes. Yeah. And you can hear little night sounds. Maybe there's an owl Mm -hmm. in your tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. And you drift yeah. off to sleep. Mm-hmm. Can you open your eyes. Oh, that was beautiful. Wow. Love Thank you so much. Absolutely. Incredible. So what, what I'm going to recommend to you is find a picture of that tree. Just find, Ooh. find a picture that, that represents that that beautiful tree of life maybe find a pomegranate picture and some other images that just remind you of that space and just make yourself a little slideshow with some music or maybe some just some ambient sound that just puts you back Mm -hmm. into that space Mm -hmm. and just set a time I do this every morning and just watch that little slideshow and it just really puts you right into that beautiful space of your core desired feelings and ready for the day. I love it. Thank you so much. I will definitely do that. I already have the picture of the tree in my mind. I just have to go find it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to get that mental image back for you. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Sarah. And where can the people at home find you? Yes. So uh, my website is actually just finishing up. I've been editing it now for a while. It's metamorphosis101.me, M-E, as well as LinkedIn. Uh, my LinkedIn is slash in slash Sarah Wong MG. And I'm at metamorphosis101 um, on Facebook and Instagram as well. So you can connect with me there. Fantastic. I'll have a a link to your website in the show notes. Perfect. And thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Audrey. And I appreciate it so, so much. It was wonderful.